We're not all about skin. We are skin, care, and the pros. And the pros does come in so many different ways. Paradise Estate by a commander okay seven five two seven two one eight. While if you turn the website auto www.grandvillaguesthouse.com. Grand Villa Guest House. Dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood? EG Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hub of Bushby Roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan option. With over 300 homes, you'll enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security post, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325 -9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property.
Allah dah murokat dia set. Boy, jangan circus restoran. Saya nak kau beli nak dimbal. Nimbal dah murokat lah jangan. Dah murok senyata, adiata, topo toro, falan kende ma bige. Luntan during, tamala, abeka dah murok kijani. Adi manda wala de. Teka we bige le, anim falan kafe di jang ikono efa. Eka apa minna kau pastry anim bakery. Iko fanan bekal ya. Badai lomba, conference lomba, workshop lomba, ya four ten ni lom dunia aku no. Domoro betul mah, ni lom international hotel ada number one. Aman ke bad domoro jam jam mah. Esa domoro jam, esa atau iya. Ah, aku mukul bandi. Ah, saya nak pergi saya puten din. Eh, atau saya nak kau be musik es restoran. Jangan lom jam lom iya, ni mana tu jam bija. Abang. Musik es restaurant, known for best quality food and customer satisfaction. Kita boleh pulakan saya saya nak suruh kau nama nubuat kerja buat bantat tulu ban. Saya kau boleh pulakan anda kau boleh suruh kau nama benda mana belum muterin bahasa tersebut lalu. Kau kau betul kan ini saya perlu emak itu mandi dengan nama nubuat ini tulu ni jauh. Mula, mesti ni lah broda mampu luas hari sekalam. Mula hari, luas hari. Ni dah kurang cuma sekalam. Mula, apa yang broda itu? Apa dah la internet all? Ayat bahasa kita all tu. Luas dot com. Nah, apa saja? Aku ni abah download lah telefon all. Nada sendiri tu ni all. Nada sering kalau susu kau nama aman jadi pura itu abang. Kau kau doki. Ada sini orang susu korang dah minta. Ini buat mesej yang saya telefon aku no. Eh, pitu kau bel jambi ada ada pitu kau babel. Kau tahu tak? No ada ada yang tak siap kau tahu. Oda ma, oda ma. Yang ada baru saya habis nak kau muda. Macam ni, ni bukan kerja nak berada sahaja. Ayo, ayo, kau siapa? Balu service di Kerala Jampo, orang kena kau lihat aku. Balu service dal di mana? Kaji ko alat dua murfi orang sang, alat dua maya muli, alat lakukan itu. Watu bela, ani wat sudah panang kono. Balu service dal di Kerala, ani dal dua kunyul. Ibu bangku karo bedo, kabering katong fok koyna. Nalla fok aku katong sura balu service dal koldo. Ali komandi telefon lalu nama buku nine four zero zero two one three seven six nine four three one nine. Wala three one nine two eight seven zero. Wala hand kabi alta internet itu alila kulu jibe www dot baluo dot com. Do you live abroad and want to build your dream home in the Gambia without risking your funds and family ties? Do you want a household name that is trustworthy and efficient? A name that will continue to give you updates on the project from the beginning to the very end with videos and pictures. If your answer is yes, then worry no more. Boss Construction and Asset Management is here for you. If you live outside the Gambia and want to build your dream home, then this is ideal for you. Just reach out to Boss Construction and let's start building the dream home into a reality. With Boss Construction, the difference is clear. We give you value for money. Some of our services includes the following construction management, building equipment rentals, rent management, purchase and leasing, asset management and many more. For more information, please contact 282-4945. Better still, send us an email bossgambia at gmail.com or you can also visit our website on www.bossgambia.com. Boss Construction, a name you can trust. Boss Construction and Asset Management, keeping families together. Designer Outlet is the number one quality and affordable stop shop for all your needs. Get your evening dresses, suit and ties, office wears for both ladies and gentlemen, beach wears, sport wears, pure leather shoes for men, quality belts, bags, heels for our beautiful ladies, original perfumes, accessories and a lot more.
us at Kondolini Road opposite Gaddafi Mosque at the Aqua Preacher Station or call us on 295-3411 or 764-2486. Miss B Designer Outlet. Shop right, look good. Welcome to the brunch on Kerfat Ramlam in Chan, welcoming you all once again to our weekly analysis and uh, reporting about the news that was in the past seven days. I'm Lamin Cham and uh, with me, uh, the usual people, Nima Kamara, uh, welcome. You were in here last week, where were you? I wasn't here. <laughs> yes, we know that. What we don't know is wh where you were. Ah, okay. Mustafa Dabo, of course, was here as usual. Mustafa, welcome. Thank you. And today our guest analyst is Mari Jabate. Mari Jabate, of course, a civic uh, uh, society organizer from human rights activists, a commentator on government affairs. Welcome. Thank you. Right. This week, of course, we're going to start with uh, the biggest news being, of course, the unfortunate fire incident that uh, took place in Canafi, which we are told have caused enormous loss in terms of uh, assets to many, many business uh, men in the Canafi industrial area. We have not <coughs> still had official sources as to confirming uh, the source and uh, the, the source and, and of course the um, cause of the fire disaster, but the latest we have is that uh, some 107 vehicles were destroyed in one garage. The gasoline, gasoline factory was totally destroyed. And also we had the furniture shop and some general merchandise shop were all burned out. We had about a businessman who lost $1.5 million um, of merchandise that were all burned to ashes. President Barrow was there and he promised that uh, there is going to be a commission of inquiry, another one, sort of to establish the cause of the fire and perhaps to see what, what can be done um, to bring much relief to those who suffered in terms of their uh, losses. Now this was a huge fire of course unprecedented in the, in the Gambia. People who were living far away said they could see the flames and they could hear tank explosions as uh, the gasoline tank itself caught fire. Madi, Mima and uh, Mustafa when did you first learn about the fire? Let me go to Mustafa now. First. Um, I think the, the evening of the same day, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody was following the UDP rally in Bakao, and then <coughs> there was information that the fire had started. But at the time, we didn't know how big it was uh, until when the, um, I went there in the morning, actually, the morning of the following day. We are still struggling. To and how was the scene when you arrived? I, I know, of course, Kerfato, we too have our own personal uh, lost in the fire. We'll yeah. come to that later. But yeah. uh, what scene did you find uh, on Monday? Chaotic as it, well, as it were the previous day. Yeah. I, had, I still found firefighters there battling to put out the remnants. And <coughs> there were um, warehouses that were still on fire. And, and you could not breathe there comfortably without uh, a mask. A mask, and uh, also uh, you, you like 
I mean, you, you, it's unbelievable. You see a lot of vehicles burnt, a lot of, uh, a lot of equipment, a lot of, I mean, it was a disaster. Ah, well. Yeah. Mari, um, this was really an industrial disaster. Uh, it, it, is, it is really amazing that no life was reported to have lost in there. Was there any? I, let, I didn't have no, it immediately. No, no one died. Is that because of the, because the this didn't happen when people have gone home or, or something like that? Sundays. Mari, what do you think could have, could have, is this some accident that was waiting to happen or could have been could have been why it was just helpless no i think it was an accident going to happen mm -hmm. and thank god um, it took that place at a time when usually workplaces would be empty yeah. and not just that but also it took place in an area which is not largely residential mm -hmm. um you can imagine if there were homes you know, close by, yeah. what could have happened. But you know, <clears throat> so it was going to happen. Yeah. And now that it happened, it's about what lessons. It was going to happen because um, uh, um, uh, uh, in our country, yeah. um, the, the laws, the regulations for safety, especially in the industrial sector, are uh, inadequate and largely unenforced. Um, and these regulations are not just about where you should build this kind of industries, mm -hmm. but within that industry, like complex, in that compound, mm -hmm. um, what safety measures are put in place. Yeah. So that when such an outbreak happens, there should be automatic responses, mm -hmm. you know, even before the fire service come. Um, so, is the building, for example, fitted with uh, the necessary firefighting equipment yes. so that they would, in their, on their own, mitigate mm -hmm. this kind of thing? Mm -hmm. uh, but also the location. Yes. You know, we said Kanafe Industrial Estate, yes. which was established, you know, decades ago. Mm -hmm. um, now, that industrial estate is intertwined with residential yes. homes. Mm -hmm. And so, because there's encroachment on it. Yeah. So that uh, it would have made sense that government years ago would have begun to consider uh, either relocating or setting, you know, strong measures, safety measures uh, to avoid this. You know, it, it, it made me recall the Grenfell Tower yeah. disaster in London. In London yeah. And so this has happened and Barrow said he's going to set up a, a commission of inquiry. Yeah. And I hope this commission is not going to just look at this explosion, yeah. but they will do an assessment of similar plants around the country, around the country. Uh, but also other plants uh, like uh, petrol stations. Mm -hmm. If you look at the way and manner petrol stations are set up in our country, yeah. you wonder because the, the petrol stations are uh, their establishment is governed by the Pura Act, yeah. and th there are a lot of. Uh, you know, regulations or steps, yes. processes yes. to do this. Yes. And so you wonder the petrol stations we have, whether yeah, actually, yeah, the, there has been the serious consideration. Yeah. Because you put a, a petrol station right at an intersection. Right in the middle of Yeah. So not just when there is uh, the explosion, but then uh, what about even the flow of traffic? Yeah. And, and we need to learn a lot from other places, you know, remember a few years ago in Ghana, in Ghana. Accra, a petrol station exploded. Exploded. You know, I even know up in the Ghana, it yeah. came yeah. 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 a few years right. ago. You know. so, so all of these are issues we need to deal with. But the most serious one yeah. um, issue to address is the uh, respondents. Um, a day after this mm -hmm. incident, or two days after, um, on Peter Gomez's show, mm -hmm. He had the, I think, head of the fire department or some, you know, top official yeah. from the fire department. Yes, course, yeah. And it, it's amazing mm. what this person was saying. I Meaning, literally, our lives are at risk. Yeah. That they, they, you know, because one in our country, we don't have hydrants, yes. as this guy was Fire saying. hydrants, yes. Yeah. And Which the, is, the, the vehicles that they have yeah. are very old. Mm -hmm. And the only vehicles that are good enough are the... Uh, fire vehicles at state house and at the airport, and, at the, at the airport. Yeah. and you look at the distance yeah, yeah? so all, all of this for me requires that we 
really come back as a, as a nation mm -hmm. to look at all of our industrial, I mean, safety, exactly. uh, firefighting, you know, infrastructure. Those, those are the lessons we should learn from this. Yeah. Uh, where were you when the, when, the, when the people said they were as far away as Abuko mm -hmm. and they could see flames climbing up the sky? Yeah, so for me, I was away, I was out of the country, and mm. I saw on Facebook, I think it must have been the same night or early morning the next day, yeah. when I saw pictures coming out. <coughs> um, even by looking at the pictures, you could see the damage that was, that was caused, but immediately it did not register to me how damaging the accident was until after I saw Fatou Touré posting uh, some of the pictures, including her Because that's close car. to home. Yeah. yeah. And when I came back and I saw this, and I was like, this was a real disaster. But just to add to what Mardi said, uh, apart from having adequate uh, regulations that are going to be enforced, I think we must also really equip our response mechanisms. Yeah, like um, the fire service. The fire service must be really decentralized because there are so many factors that can impede even their movement. Mm. Uh, when the traffic is blocked, even just ordinary ambulance when they're transporting sick people, it, yeah. it's really a struggle for them to find their way people through. People don't respect the, them. Exactly, the heavy traffic. So imagine a disaster like this unfolding and the fire service could not access. That compound with their, the inadequate nature of uh, yeah. the, the equipment yeah, that they have. vehicles and equipment, fire hydrants exactly. particularly. It's very important. I think people, uh, I mean, people don't take these things more seriously. Fire hydrant is somewhere where you can easily tap water in case of emergencies. Mm. It should be all around town, but unfortunately it's, it's not it's not as uh, as commonplace as it should be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Is it here? How many surprises? But know. yes, there are yeah, yes, fire hydrants used to exist in Banjo. I think it's in the case of itself too, right? Yeah, I think yeah, I have I've heard of this. But yeah, these are all stuff that should come that we yeah. will study. But you see above from that also accountability. Accountability. You see uh it is not in our nature here um, to pursue accountability. But somebody at the end of the day, somebody is saying, "What happened in Kanifing is is, is desti destined to happen. Yeah. It's the will of God." But I, I think there should be arrest and right. prosecution. prosecution. Somebody must be held responsible, oh, but um, or a, 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 a company. But at the same time, mm -hmm. a government should also uh, consider compensations or. Uh, some kind of bailout because um, imagine a businessman losing one point five million. Where are the insurance? Yeah. Where are the insurance? Yeah. Right. So, so which means that's also an issue yeah. um, that uh, one needs to know because these are all part of safety things. You know, uh, when I drive around town, mm -hmm. the, the police are very good at stopping <laughs> at the checkpoint where's your insurance. Yeah. And you look at the insurance most vehicles have in this country, yeah. it basically serves no purpose. Yeah, you know, you because third party yeah, insurance. Yeah. yeah. But then you look at our buildings, yeah. our homes. Yeah. Uh, they are not insured. Yeah, not insured. And, and these are all part of modernizing mm -hmm. our society and, uh, and then of course to ensure safety, safety and security. But yeah. every house uh, you know, needs to be insured. Yeah. Every life needs to be insured, mm -hmm. and not just that, but to make sure yeah. insurance sure. companies yeah. pay, up. pay up. Because I remember yeah. at, at, at time, yes, we uh, had a vehicle yeah. it was uh, standing on a mango tree, yeah. you know, mango tree, and, got, and, it, yeah, and, and, and the window screen got cracked. Mm. And when we went to the insurance company, they said you get pay. pay. Yeah, well, they said we get a police report. Yeah. So, of course, we reported the matter to the police, and the police confirmed, yes, it, you know, this thing dropped. But yeah. we have the, the premium insurance, yeah. you know, the, the highest level. Exactly. So, now we went back to the company, and it is okay. They, um, they either get it, fix it, so or we give them invoices so they can go and get this. Wow. And so, all those things were apprehended. Absolutely. I mean, this is like five, ten years ago. Yeah. Until today, they did not fix it. And so that is the experience also of many people. Yeah. So um, part of modernizing our society, yeah. you know, because a modern society, uh, an urbanized, um, you know, society, a highly, you know, technical society in any way you can imagine, uh, fires are big occurrences. Yeah, you, you know, yeah. other forms of accidental safety. Yeah, you know, so yeah. insurance is a huge uh, part of that, and so. Our insurance has to work, yes, our insurance has to work, but also law enforcement 
our regulatory bodies, bodies. must ensure in the industrial sector, I mean, even uh, physical planning department in yeah. terms of building homes, yeah. um, you know, and not just that, but even our road building construction yeah. has to all consider, uh, you know, uh, what is required for a modern uh, road. Yeah. So when you look at the Bachelor Pahadin Highway yeah. or Westfield to Tabakota Highway, where is the lane for ambulance, for emergency? It doesn't exist. exist. You don't even see a road mm -hmm. And These are all safety issues. issues. You know, now they have this terrible tendency of building concrete slabs on road and call it a road. Oh. <laughs> you go and build concrete slabs. Such Look at that road in Talimbing, I mean, uh, cross border zone. Mm. You build concrete slabs, mm. no drainage system, mm. no allowance for water to pass. Mm. I mean, even the sites are not done for people to for, pull for, over, for example, for pavement, mm. and then they call it a road. road. And it looks like this is a trend ex building, you know, because today uh, I saw at Abuko yeah. the art station. You know, there's a road that goes in there. Yeah, that can get you up to West, Westfield. Yeah. So, and people have been talking about, like, that, that part of addressing our transportation That's problem. Road, yeah. So it appears, uh, I don't know who's building it, that, but they are, kind of yeah, the so, which, which is good. That is, we have to build roads. Mm -hmm. But to my shock, mm -hmm. uh, is the same concrete that slabs concrete. they are building. Concrete slabs, my goodness, I mean, yeah. and, and, you know, yeah. So build us a modern, you know, quality road. Yeah. Yes, that is how we are going to modernize our economy, modernize our society, it's ensure our safety and security. Too. Yeah. If you keep on building roads once and then having to come back every two years to fix them again, that is... So that's but, but also, also important, I mean, even if you were at, uh, if you went to the, fire, the scene of the fire accident, I mean, a lot of people were also reporting that um, there was a gas leakage that's at that point. particular point. Yeah for a period of over 24 hours, because yeah. they mention a day. Uh, it's not clear whether it's day and night, but at least 12 hours we can so maybe safely say yeah. that this gas leakage had happened and the natives have, rep uh, have reported it, but nothing had happened. So probably that brings us to the issue of safety issues and also monitoring. Accountability, yeah. he said, because yeah. th there so, are definitely many yeah. explanations like that. They could fill a uh, gas. Yeah. in the air and this had been happening many hours before the actual yeah. fire it is even believed that um i mean it's because it's so, at some point somewhere around the area there was people who sell scrap metals yeah and they were dealing with metals like uh, i mean fire they, yeah i mean they were yeah, yeah. They, they were well, well, they, they, this is where they suspected the gas the fire must have must started. have started yeah and then it followed the leakage yeah right down to the tank therefore itself uh, which fed the flames and that's why we could see the flames as far because there is a there is a, there is a like. gas tanker like this big yeah, yeah. gas tanker mm -hmm. that, that was positioned inside that big that compound i see this is had him had him guys gas country. Country. yeah so and um this is where the fire began we were told so well, of course uh, investigation will be there established will give us that yeah. so but well, we may be looking at the issue of probably uh negligence negligence of, of the monitoring company Lack of monitoring, monitoring uh, etc. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Well, I mean, there's this, there's this talk about huge losses to individual business business groups such as uh, is it and then the uh, and the mechanic garage which lost about a hundred, nearly a hundred vehicles. Yeah. Now, what would you think would happen if, for example, all these vehicles are insured that one insurance or perhaps different insurance? How would they cope with that? The economy is small. Hundred I don't vehicles. know if they will be able to pay. Jemat, I mean, the guy was crying. I mean, the Lebanese guy. He yeah. said his 25 years of work have all gone. Perhaps he was the one who lost 1.5 million. I we had about. Yeah. Yeah. The 75 million. Well, if it was, if it was any other country, someone would expect that somebody would have to have liability to pay for at least. Part of the loss, if the not cost all of the, the But that's exactly. of course when, we, when, when, when the cost and the source of the fire is established, which in the Gambia, you know, it, takes, it can take months and months. And in fact, what they do, what we should be worried about, is the government doing what they always do. That is they investigate and finish. this report, they would even keep it in secret. If need be, they put, they take it yeah, to but state but, house. But, uh, uh, that's uh, what they uh, do. Uh, but this uh, was the government. Different. Uh, 
Has the government the, set up no, a committee see. yet? The president no, no, said no, no. it's going to be The president said, and, and while I was yeah. there, there were still but agents who were doing some preliminary interviews. How many yeah. times have you been told that we are going to set up an investigation is, that we never yeah, heard anything but, about afterwards? Yeah, but I mean, it's, so it's now yeah. seven days. Yes, but what I'm saying is that, yeah, by now we saw so a preliminary a, a committee. police or the committee would have come out with some preliminary findings or yeah. tell us the direction the investigation is taking. Yeah, yeah right. but, but to establish that committee, mm. the, the task force to do the investigation. Yeah, so, that's that, that's that. Um, and until now, that announcement is not made. Mm -hmm. It's only yeah. we assume they are doing the first time. That's what we have now. Yeah. So, so to, I think, to the uh, bank. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so uh, I think this is a matter <coughs> also that the I hope the business community through the chamber, yeah, the chamber, <coughs> chamber of commerce would, uh, you know, with, with seriously with get involved. But what, uh, what can be the role of the government here? If, suppose these are all private businesses and. They're supposed to be insured. They're supposed to be uh, individually owned. What can the government do there? Would it would it be accurate, uh, uh, appropriate uh, for government to come like what you said, a bailout, uh, put, put public money to support these private individual private businesses? Um, well, government has everything to do here from the beginning to the end. Yeah. Um, because this matter concerns an act um, that would be considered criminal. Mm -hmm be you know whether it cost life and property mm -hmm. and in this case property yeah. and so uh, government therefore has a responsibility to protect mm -hmm. uh, the rights of those that have properties that are destroyed yeah. and so um, um, therefore the government should first of all uh, lead the process to establish um, why and how yeah. this happened the extent of the Which damage that has happened. what the president said. Then. Yes, and then who are the affected parties and who are the responsible parties, parties. and make sure the responsible parties are held accountable Found and okay. those affected parties to ensure that, that uh, they, 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 yeah, their properties or their damage has been repaired yeah. and that is true one, their insurance companies, companies. I mean to ensure that government they comply. Yeah, there's compliance by these companies, you know, yeah. to, to do what they should do. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the government should come with come with money from central bank yeah. and say we're gonna compensate yeah. this yeah. Well, well you know um, that that would come like a last resort mm. because uh, I believe part of the functions of government uh, should be to uh, support um, uh, citizens uh, mm. to overcome their loss, mm. um, you know, to the greatest extent possible. Mm. So where um, you know insurance uh, is is limited or even absent, and um, you know government should be in a position uh, to support through many means. I mean, it can be a bailout in terms of a grant, but bailouts also by government. Mm. Somebody should pay for it, so it could be a loan. Mm -hmm. uh, right, um, at, at a very reasonable rate, yes, yes. you know, so to those companies, can, yeah, they can restart yeah. the business immediately yeah. and be yeah. paid. Because what you want to avoid as a government, uh, which also is your responsibility, is that <laughs> this incident has caused unemployment, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, or potentially would cause That's unemployment cost because, money. yeah, those folks so those who are working there, you know, cannot uh, continue to work there, yeah. or I mean, somebody who's lost 25 years of his. I mean, work yeah. right now, employing or paying someone's salary is not the it's priority. Not, it's not the priority anymore. You know, so and government has to come to really protect also yeah. uh, those workers, and then you know, uh, now and in the future. So uh, therefore, government is in this from the beginning to the end, yeah. Yeah. and I hope they come to really fulfill their responsibility. They just don't wash up their hands from it, you know, at any point. But to ensure that up to the, its logical conclusion, mm -hmm. the right steps were taken. I want to also add that if their investigation should found that the government has also failed in certain uh -huh. uh, in implementing certain uh, measures, yeah. and that could be a contributing factor to the fire outbreak, then they have a responsibility to pay for yeah. their failure. Negligence. But also, if you have certain entities that contribute so much to the GDP, especially Mardi has alluded to the fact that they are also providing employment, mm -hmm. it's in the state's interest to keep them in business. So if they go out of business and you're in a position to help, mm -hmm. And this is why bailouts happen everywhere around the world. Yeah, but you know, I'm sure like Jim that you claim and the others, yeah. they pay a huge amount of tax. Yeah. Yeah. So that's also revenue government is losing and you don't want to lose that revenue. Yeah. So why don't you help them to come back so that you also get your revenue, revenue. get employment for your youths, and you know, knowing that 
I mean, a higher youth unemployment is a threat to national security. So, right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Madi. Uh, and we move on to the major story, another major story of the week, of course, that is taking us to the ninth edition, ninth session, that is, of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparation Commission. This week, or over the last two weeks, so to speak, the Commission have been hearing testimonies relating to alleged sexual violence uh, committed in the last 22 years, either directly, allegedly, or connected to the regime of former President Yaya Jame. We had testimonies from Chief Protocol Officer um, Al Haji Sise. We had one from President Jame's uh, former very close bodyguard, Yusuf Hassani, uh, right? And then, of course, we had the startling revelations made by some women who accused both the President and a former cabinet minister of uh, very explicit, if you like, sex acts performed on them by those two men. Um, Mustafa, let me go straight to you. We have always expected that, um, well, you know, of course, many people thought this session would not attract as much attention as the, those of the junglers or Edward Singhati that preceded it. Um, but uh, along the way, I mean, there have been some hair-raising hair revelations so that really touched many people's hearts. Which one particularly do you think? The youth went home with? Um, so for me, I was following all of it because for me, ultimately, what TRRC, um, I, I follow a TRRC testimonies so that because one TRRC testimony doesn't mean much in itself. Mm -hmm. So if they are focusing on sexual acts of uh, Jambe, for instance, or rape of Jambe, you must have to follow all the testimonies to understand the context. Mm -hmm. and be able to link one evidence to another so that you understand whether Jambe is, whether, you know. So I was following all of it. Mm -hmm. I, um, I did not have the luxury of listening to one and not listening to the other. But I think, I, I think these five people you've mentioned, Yusuf Asane, uh, Tufa, uh, Fatima Tajalo, Binta Jamba, uh, uh, Binta Jamba, um, um, no, not Binta Jamba. I'm talking about those who are directly linked to Jame. Oh, the Binta Jata. Binta, 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 Binta. Ministry of Education. Yes. And Protocol. then and Alaji Sisi and the Yusuf Anonymous. And the I Anonymous. think those are particularly more interesting because mm -hmm. they've added a very... They kind of lend credence to the testimony of the To, to information uh, the that Tuva had initially presented, okay. or the Human Rights Watch investigations and all that. So we, it kind of solidify. Let's look at Alaji, uh, protocol officer, said, uh, Nima. She said, he said, well, he, he actually went, resisted, being, uh, resisted being, you know, being pushed to, to actually say exact words uh, that would just, just directly tell us that the president was using the girls' record officers, protocol officers in bracket, for his sexual uh, <laughs> place. But he actually said the, the, the girls have been kept for the president's place. So he actually said it all. That coming from a protocol officer who's supposed to be their boss, he told us that some of the people, he didn't even know how they come. He was being asked to work with them, and that's what. Um, coming from him, is it not really confirming that everybody has suspected that uh, these protocol officers in brackets might have just been protocol officers in masquerade. Um, I think this, this is an allegation that have been ongoing for so long, even prior to the TRRs even set up. And there is also, if you're looking for consistency, you, you know that there is Jamie prefer a certain type of women. Ah, do you know that? I thought he... <laughs> oh, there's ah. TRRC, apparently. They Did they establish that? The <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, 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 they have not I, said it, but it appears. Uh, it appears, yes. Is exactly. that fair colored or, or yeah. coffee, everyone has been or coffee ones or, or big posterior ones? <laughs> I yeah. didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> what was so, what, where, who, what was the part of the life you said? So shall we listen to? <laughs> no, I'm not going into, into that. <laughs> and the reason why I'm not going into that is not for Jamie's sake. It's oh. for the victims. All oh, right. right. Uh, because if you focus on this, since what we're trying to do is we diminish the agency of those girls. Uh, who have been victimized yeah. by being employed into a state institution and using that institution to exploit them the way that they have done. And I think Alaji Sise and other people who have worked closely with Jamme, their testimony are very important because not just for establishing the facts regarding Jamme, but also to convince 
uh, the public who have become so skeptical. And this is this is the saddest part of what these testimonies are bringing out on, on the floor. I think for me, what I was expecting is that this is going to stimulate a, ge a greater or a general conversation within the community for us to have, uh, because it's not just Jamme. Uh, there are so many other Jammes within our communities that we need to be looking at. Ah, wow. Perhaps he, he, he definitely had more leeway and more, um, he was more influential perhaps to getting them that cheap and treating them like that. But I agree that there could have been many more Jamme types in the society. Mari, what did you learn from this? Um, do we even, do you even believe what has been said? Of course, I, I, I believe and I'm, I'm not surprised. Mm. Um, I've always said this, you know, not, not today, that um, sexual violence is an epidemic in our society. Mm -hmm. um, in the work we do, uh, I remember um, some years ago, um, we had invited some women that work in leisure in the industry, you know, hotels and restaurants and um, stuff like that, you know, on gender-based violence and, and tango. And, and I can remember vividly the, these women, um, you know, some weeping, really, the daily in their workplaces, what they face, you know, how the words, the, you know, that men tell them that male colleagues they are um, you know superiors and so on and the you know the approaches the advances they make on them and you know I, I can't just imagine how furious really I was that that was going on I know uh, in the public sector also you know we've had engagements where some women literally had to resign mm -hmm. because you know the MD you know, is as target or some senior manager, yeah. you know, I mean, putting, uh, you know, your promotion or your incentives or benefits, mm -hmm. you know, against you coming to sleep with him or, you know, be with him. Mm -hmm. uh, but also in the private sector, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, um, we have had engagements also and know mm -hmm. what, you know, obtains um, against our women. So, and not to mention homes, you know, also we followed these cases. Um, you remember um, <coughs> Auntie Hadim Boch, yeah. you know, uh, when she testified, and I think she did come out, I mean, she did really lay this out that um, I, I guess people begin to understand what all this means. And uh, together we uh, formed this thing called the Network on Gender-Based Violence. Mm -hmm. And so, and um, you know, this is the work that it, it's been doing. And so we had a lot of exposure to uh, sexual violence in our community. Um, it's just that uh, because it's women, uh, the patriarchal nature of our society, yeah. um, you know, the deep seated social cultural beliefs and practices that exist. Sometimes we put religion behind these things, exactly. you know, That's falsely. Right. Yeah. Um, so um, you don't get to hear most of these stories. Yeah. And so when, therefore, a woman comes out to speak, yeah. like Tufa, like, you know, like Fatu Binta Jamba, Binta Jamba, Jamba, Binta Jamba, you know, uh, even. These past two days since the testimony, yeah. uh, I've had with engagements with women, educated women, yeah. women that I expected to know better, yeah. uh, raised doubt, uh, yeah. hesitation about fact, that I was testimony. Going, I, I will come into you know, that. Yeah. You've been very familiar with this kind of stories uh, in your work, the civil society organization. Um, if somebody like Binta Jamba, like you said, people doubting, uh, she said rather quite... Uh, Frankly, oh, quite interestingly, that uh, he was raped 60 times, over 60 times. People raised the question, wow, she, she must now not be talking about absence of consent on her side in, in 60 occasions. People wonder whether this can be called rape or it's just a betrayal of trust or why did you think somebody uh, who didn't want to make, uh, who didn't want to make love, uh, who, who, who is resisting, to be made love to by a man would still continue, uh, you know, with this man for 60 times or so. Yeah, I mean... Um, can, it, can that be called rape? Or is just... Oh, oh certainly. I mean, um, people can rape a woman for years uh, in a particular home or community. Um, and that would never be anything near consent. It would still be rape. Uh, you see, rape... Uh, when it happens, yeah. uh, two elements, it's about one power 
and two, trust, the betrayal of that trust. And control. You know, of course, that power brings <coughs> control. Yeah. And, you know, today, we can have a woman. I, I, I went to Fadid uh, press conference uh, in June. Mm -hmm. I, I was talking to a woman, a, you know, an educated woman, and she told me, we were in my office, no, man, I go I go to the And I'm like, really? I said, I mean, I can rape you in my office right now. Mm -hmm. Then, the man of, yes, you will die. <laughs> but I will rape you. So, um, because oh. you trust that I wouldn't rape you. Yes. You trust me, you know who is mine. Yeah, you're comfortable in my company. You're comfortable in my company. Your mind will never yeah. come. All right. And so, it can get to a situation where I, I, I have power to control. control. In, that alone is an is, is is element of control. The fact that you trust me, mm. I control you. But also, it could be I have power because I have money. Uh, because and I have position. Yeah. In the case of Jamba, she was supposed to be the police, is it? Yeah, she, you know, oh, yeah, was police? a police officer. And of course, then, Remember, yeah. it was yeah. an immigration officer. Immigration yeah. officer. Yeah. And, like and that. Sonko yeah. was minister of interior. Yeah. 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 All right. So, so when you analyze all of those factors, mm. you realize um, this is not strange. And in Jamba's case, I, I, I qualify as a sex slave. Mm. All right. I mean, uh, that uh, um, Sonko... In Jamba's case. Yeah, Jam, Sonko made her, sex sex slave. Slave. made her a sex slave. Exactly. And so... 60 times, 120 times, 180 it times, matter. it doesn't matter because yeah. um, in this environment, mm -hmm. uh, when you look at these skills, mm -hmm. Sonko is in a position of power, power. and Jamba is a place of weakness Witness. for a number of reasons. Yeah. And so, um, if, if you are not in that position, mm -hmm. uh, you and I can sit here and rationalize. Yeah, no, but this, I mean, possible. yeah, but uh, at that time, um, what what was going on in Jamba's head? Yeah. What means opportunities are presented to yeah. her, are available what to her in her, her options? Hand? Yes, I mean, how does she understand, you know, her entire circumstances? Yeah, yeah. And you and I can sit here and, and rationalize that, but at that moment uh, is what we need to consider. So that when we even look at Prufa's case, again, I was having this exchange with uh, another woman. I said, you know, the, the fact that Tufa could get to the state house. Mm. The state house, even you and me right now, ordinarily, yeah. if you enter the state house, you will really feel you've entered an environment, environment of power. Of power. All right? mm. And so, from a social, cultural, political point of view, mm. we perceive the president to be powerful. Very powerful. And, and so, to be and so close to the president, yeah. a, a lot of us are overcome. They, they get elevated. I've seen journalists who, instead of putting, you know, you know, very valid questions to the president, they keep just laughing yeah. with him. Yeah. Just but, because but, they but, feel ele elevated that yeah. they are near the president. All right. You know, so I, I, I told her, you know, so when Tufa enters that house and is the president of the republic, um, the pressures on her, yeah. you know, mentally, psychologically, yeah. uh, because of the political power, the social power, the economic power this individual has, yeah. all, you know, pressure her yeah. to the point that her ability to resist, to resist uh, you know is 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 is, is very limited yeah. and so to downplay that yeah uh it's really unfortunate it, yeah. you, you you know you're just lucky yeah. you know you're not in that now, situation in fact what she said is quite important um she said like you just uh, uh i mean illustrated here was a very powerful man who felt that all what he was doing there would never come to light. Nobody would ever have known about it. And this is too far. She's in the momentum now to tell the whole world about the other side of the man we thought was a Naziruddin, a sir, untouchable, you know. And now he's telling us the, act, the, the side of Jamia that we didn't know. She felt she, she was compelled to come out and tell the people, so that people like him can feel that well, you can have your yeah, way all the time. Yeah, and uh, Charm, she, uh, I, I, I like this lady, the way she narrated her story. And, and you know what, you I, I realized that she was the only one, she was the only victim, first victim so far, mm -hmm. that have people really clapping for at the end of her, his, her testimony. Yeah, because she, she, she said was something, everywhere. because she moved everybody. Yeah, you, you can see uh, there is no <laughs> venom or vengeance in, in this her, young lady. Yeah. You know, remember the part she was saying, okay, you, are, my story is not about you, that is her fellow contestants at the time, mm -hmm. who saw the good side of Jamie? Mm -hmm. That is your story. Yeah. And, and it is fine. 
Yes, you went to the contest, you contested, you won a prize, and Jame acted like a father to you. Fine. Good. That is your story. But, mine but my, this is my story. Exactly. So I, I, I celebrate you. Yeah. So, but don't despise, despise me. You. Because that is also my story. my story. And I think that is a very magnanimous, very, yeah. you know, honest and, you know, uh, really mature fair, approach to it. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the ending of it. Mm -hmm. Look, um, when we speak at the end, we say, if I have offended anyone, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you, see, you know, she made a decision. Absolutely. What I'm saying is going to offend yeah. Jame. Yeah. People like men like Jame. Yeah. Men who support, support perpetrators. Yes. And to you, I'm not sorry. And for me, I think that's the greatest statement to yeah. come out of the TRRC yeah. so far. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know what, I, what I've learned from Tufa's testimony mm -hmm. is this. Uh, rape is a tool for violation, for violence. Mm -hmm. When men use it, they're using it to assert control, to assert power. Mm -hmm. And to do that, they suck away your own power from you. Mm -hmm. What Tufa, the opportunity Tufa had is to be able to reclaim that power. Okay. To be able to restore her dignity mm -hmm. and to overcome all the, uh, the, the, the dehumanization that she went through. Yeah. So using that plaf platform, that's what she was trying to do. Yeah. To show to the perpetrator, you thought you had my power, but I have my I power, have power back. back. This is my power back. And, now and you, the, the yeah. difference between her and the other women is that she had help. Yes. Tuva had help. The other women may not necessarily have help. Oh, yeah. And when something happened for so many years past, yeah. sometimes you would find inconsistencies in the way that you explain yourself. Yes, yes. And this is what skeptics and I mean, yeah, people that's why I with bad to, will yeah. would say, oh, the, your story is not true, your story yeah, is yeah, not yeah. true. Mm -hmm. What we do not understand is that the more you continue to narrate your story, yeah. the more consistent it becomes. For many of the, the women, unlike Tufa, they have kept all of these things inside. Mm -hmm. And this is just their opportunity now to come out to express and it's relieving I, 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 that I, life. It's, it's, it's true because I, I observe that the kind of society we live in, um, uh, this kind of things are uh, mainly taboo. Um, even even though it, you might say, okay, Jamie is not here, so it's incorrect. But uh, I'm trying to say that even even the mere fact that people will, this kind of people will be bold enough to narrate a story. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not fearing being stigmatized and you know, not fearing they themselves, you know, I mean, exposing sites about them. It's, it tells a lot about how transformed our society now I is. Speak, I mean, yeah. I, I want to say our, something. It looks to, to me that they are they are very discontent. Is a measure of their progress. If you talk, if you if you check how our society used to live, isn't it? You get this feeling that our society have to progress. Mm -hmm. These people can come come out and speak so so. Mm -hmm. You know, in such a manner that they, they don't fear anything now. They they don't fear repressors. They don't fear stigmatization mm -hmm. to themselves mm -hmm. or shame or anything to them. Or is it because this? Two particularly, Yamba and Tufa have had three or four, five years of living, perhaps in the West, where where they have transformation in their mentality. Yeah. I mean, if you pick somebody, I want, yeah, I yeah. want to say. I, I, want, I just want to do an example. If, yeah. if if probably somebody in Makati who might have <coughs> suffered the same, would he come? Would he come and say the same thing like Tufa? Yeah. So it boils down to the fact that these women have help, and I I, I want well, to just help. yeah, I want to point exactly. to the fact that. When Tufa was explaining her story, she was deliberately using language that she knows would make us uncomfortable, yeah. this society uncomfortable. Yeah. And that was so important mm -hmm. because it is to put it out to you that if you are uncomfortable by this, mm -hmm. what about the act itself? Mm -hmm. You must be uncomfortable by the act and not the words that I'm using. And that's the hypocrisy and about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And about when you're listening, when you're listening to her terrible. testimony yeah. with men and she would explicitly, explicitly say, he sodomized me. He used my anus instead of my vagina. Yeah. And you hear me say, Astaghfirullah. Yeah. So the word makes you uncomfortable. And that's, what what, that's why Tufa made it a point yeah. to repeat it several times. Exactly. <sighs> and, and even to speak in national languages. Yes. You know, so the ordinary people yeah. would get it. And, in, you and know, that's why it even becomes yeah, even more eloquent. Yeah, in, in, she seemed to be addressing her doubt as to, yeah. to, to yeah. get them so, to be. Yeah, because what uh, Jimma was saying, I remember in June in our press conference, we were saying things like our, uh, you know, we have to make our society uncomfortable. Yeah. Because uh, that, comfort that, comfort, being a disaster. Yeah, that, that comfort is our disaster. That yeah. comfort is their protection. Yeah. So we have to, um, and, and that is the fact of life. Mm -hmm. Until we challenge our fundamental beliefs, yeah. until we challenge, you know, 
what we hold to be true, yeah. uh, we're not going to make progress. We're not going to learn. We're not going to get the truth. And uh, you know, and that all the more speaks to the power of uh, two first testimony. And you know, about the issue you are raising, you see, um, first we have to uh, thank the TRRC. Yeah. I think they help these people. Yeah. To be able to come to speak, exactly. you know, to address right. these things. You remember the other uh, testimony of this lady, uh, I think part of the April 2000, who was. Yeah, uh, they've been Yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. And so, yes, I, I think, you know, even if you go to Borapa or, you know, all the way down in anywhere, eventually a woman will talk about this thing. But again, I mean, these are not issues. That are also easy for any society exactly. because largely the world is very male dominated. Mm -hmm. Remember, um, years ago, yeah. uh, Dominic Strauss Kahn, yeah, who was head of the IMF, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, destined to be French president, you yeah. know, very powerful yeah. guy yeah. at a hotel with yeah. Nafisa yeah. Jalo, you a know, little girl's testimony yeah. destroyed his car, uh, exactly. But uh, Nafisa came under a barrage of criticism, yeah, absolutely, that you know. This uh, powerful man, I mean, a yeah. hotel waitress, yeah, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Yeah. But remember, look at Trump. Yeah. You know, yeah. look at the Bella George, George, George Ka Ka Kavanaugh. Yeah. You know, the lady professor who said in yeah. college or in yeah. school, high school days, yeah. you know, she, she, she was, I mean, assaulted by Absolutely. George Kavanaugh. And yeah. how Trump trivialized that. And a lot of people no. cheered that for Trump as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, the U.S. Olympic team. Yeah. You know, the right. judge, the, 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 the coach, was, yeah, the coach, you know, yeah, was and big, was it, it, yeah, it's because, um, the things came so consistent, a lot of women came, yeah. otherwise, if it were just and one the female actor, uh, yeah. how to call it, yeah, the, this great actor, I mean, I uh, forgot his name, the I think it was a film producer, and film, film producer, who, yes, you yeah, know. The meet, who, who actually, yeah, that you know, worldwide so, meet too. and yeah, the me too thing, so I, I'm sure the first one, two women that would come out, people will seek to suppress them. You know, the allegations against Bill Cosby. But, yeah. I mean, but, you know, if, even Clinton, if, I mean, uh, other people did not take it up. The, they wouldn't have. They yeah, yeah people out. would have suppressed yeah, this. Yeah. So w women have faced this thing. Yeah. And, you know, um, Lamin, for me, this is a very personal thing mm -hmm. as well. I have only daughters. You, you know what I'm saying? Ah, okay. You it, don't have yeah. daughters. So, so for me, um, I have only uh, it takes me to another level. Yeah. If a woman says, uh, you know, my man did destroy him. Because I, I just imagine if my I mean daughter comes now, John Fuller said uh, a professor at UTG did destroy him. I'm not gonna sit there no, to no, no, you uh, like but your story doesn't seem I'm I'm, I'm gonna smile, you know, yeah. yeah. So and and people need to so understand people must that. place themselves in that kind of position. Uh -huh. and, and and I told this uh, lady who I was saying like no man can rape her. Yeah. You know, she, she has two daughters. I said, you know, um I can I I maybe I won't blame you. You're part of this society. This is the conventional, you know, narrative. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you had exposure uh, to probably the exposure I have, having worked with, you know, yeah. as part of my social work. Exactly. Yeah. But I said uh, um, you have two daughters. That is serious because you and uh, reports are saying out of three women, mm -hmm. any three women, yeah. one is I mean <coughs> abused. Yeah. yeah, I understand. And imagine out of any three women, yeah, and, and 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 I can I bet you know. in in that it's not even out of every three women one, mm -hmm. out of every three women three women are abused. <laughs> yes, I mean I, I'm very sure that if, 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 if women should recall mm -hmm. uh, from childhood to date, yeah. Yeah. she can list we all have some also. some people who uh, yeah, uh, violations against her, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by, by men yeah. you know like me and you. Yeah. So um, it's it's just so unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, people raise these things. Okay. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's quite a, another thing before we move on is that some of the things I observe, of course, I know the sex on that come with rules in terms of protecting the identity of the victims, etc. But then there was this thing I see the, com uh, the council and the witnesses saying, <laughs> come and identify. Uh, is, is number three there? Was number five there? Was number five? Those were victims. Some, no, was it, is it not also, were, were it victims or People who were perpetrators. Yes, that's no, those were victims. Those were the victims. Um, were so victims. you have only a few perpetrators there, but majority of those, the numbers they are counting are list of people who had worked at protocol. 
at the state house at different levels mm -hmm. because there are people exposed at different levels that is why they brought testimonies from different, different perspectives levels. yeah what i'm trying you to say is those people been given numbers on and, and not identified have they come forward to give a statement to give statements and then they they preferred not to be named so they've been mm -hmm. given numbers no there so, are lo there are a lot of uh, sides to this because you know trrc is an investigation yeah so what happens in front of us it's just a show like they 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 bringing us some part of the evidence they've already collected yeah. so trc in their investigations will have incredible number of list of people involved in this people involved in that and that and that mm -hmm. so they have their own pile of evidence yeah, absolutely and within that they select so they what to show no, they try to I think also come from where yeah. the witnesses have seen have no, you seen no, X, no, Y, and Z? Yeah. So, so I, I think in the case of Alaji, what was done, they, they, they would have known yeah. that TRRC in the investigation, these are the women well, who were supposed to be protocol officers. Who were so protocol they, officers. Yeah. Protocol so in this list of protocol officers, yeah. who were those special ladies that yeah. Alaji was referring to? Oh, I see. And, you know, he would mention would the numbers that they, they were. And probably uh TRS also knew their yeah. own list of new special yeah. ladies. ladies so they'll see whether they'll correspond and perhaps yeah. there are yeah. others who might have been married who women yeah. currently yeah. married yeah. yeah so so that if if you name names yeah uh you also enjoy the privacy privacy uh, of, uh, the, the, the name of those people, people. and uh, if they are married they yeah are, and that can yeah, yeah. Women, yeah. And, but even if they are not married yeah. um you know, you may make it difficult for them to get a husband. Get a husband. Because, I mean, you <laughs> know, a husband. comfort woman. Who's going to marry the comfort woman of... <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man I, I, don't think that would be, I don't think that would be a good justification if the person is just a perpetrator. But my no, the person, what, I believe is, what I believe is that sometimes... They are victims. Victims. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. What I don't like about it, though, yeah. uh, why they are not disclosing perpetrators' yeah. names. Exactly. Like, That's for right. example, I don't know which lady was it. Who said anonymous. she was also the anonymous raped name. or I mean or assaulted sort of yeah. by someone in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? I mean uh, Minister of Justice. Yes. Mm. I mean this is our public institution. Absolutely. If a woman went there and assaulted by a man, you need to know who the person is. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I think uh, you know those ones we should know because we are only truth finding exercise. Yes, yes, yes. Even in, when you look at Tina Jada's uh, testimony as well, yeah. I mean I think we should. Uh, no, because they are either a victim or a perpetrator. Yeah. If you can know the names of the victims, yeah. we should know the perpetrator. Some people are so perpetrators and victims as well. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that is a perpetrator. And it annoys a lot of people because even Justice Minister is your president is to say, yeah, they are allowed, they are aware of it. It's a two paragraph press so release. Two that's sentence that's actually is. press release. So, so you don't name anybody. So it, I mean, everybody in the Ministry of Justice would be losing sleep over what, what is this? You should know, you should know. Yeah, but but you see, I, I mean, overall, for me, uh, this, the testimony of this woman, yeah. um, and uh, Alaji, he say himself, even though he's trying to be uh, diplomatic to be misleading about it. I mean, yeah. uh, I can't imagine adult Gambian. Yeah. You are a citizen, you are a human being. Do you think I mean, he knows, come, come he knows the issue? Much. He yeah. knows more than he's willing. Oh, oh definitely. He knows, knows more than he uh, he has 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 know more, more than he's So I don't know what he's, what he's hiding. Yeah. All right. But for me, what all of this exposes, really, yeah. um, is the very heart of dictatorship, yeah. um, of the, the, the severe damage. I think killing our children in 2000 mm -hmm. and playing with our girls and women, yes. I, I think that's the most insidious, uh, most rotten, yeah, uh, you know, most disgusting crime mm -hmm. uh, that this regime has caused government, for, for which for me is utterly unforgivable. Absolutely. You know, I mean, um, to play with our women in the way Jame yeah, and his I mean, our, our uh, perpetrators, co-perpetrators mm -hmm. did so, um, it's very painful. It's really very painful. painful. And, uh, you, you know, so for, for me, really, this is the height of the crimes that they've committed against Gambians. Because wow. our children are women. The, the, these are the very essence of our being. You know what I'm saying? So we, 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 uh, to address the doubters, we, nobody, nobody doubted. that well. There were women who were employed as protocol officers who doesn't, or neither had the qualification nor the the maturity to be one, and they have no official functions just to be around the presidency. Mm. Uh, we knew that happened, the protocol officer, and uh, many others testified that that happened. Um, and so, though, if, well, for those who doubt, what other reason would this man 
have been brought. If not, it's for the purpose of what has been alleged. Now, I think even if you look at the TRRC and their selection of, uh, because they have limited time yeah. and they had to also focus on other forms of sexual violence, not directly linked to Jambe. Mm. But if you look at their choice of uh, witnesses yeah. on matters that are connected to Jambe, that is why they bring uh, people who have participated in different layers. Yes. For instance, you have an oddly mm -hmm. who must have known yes. about issues That's surrounding the presidency yeah, yeah. because he's close to him. He knows who goes in and goes out. Mm -hmm. They brought that one. And that one says, of course, when women and ladies are going in, we don't escort them. Mm -hmm. That's the ambassador's directives. Mm -hmm. When men are going, we escort them. So, so of course, and that tells us the kind a, of a policy. Of at that so they don't escort women. They don't escort women. But they escort men. And this includes soldier women, uh, oddlies, uh, uh, no, sorry, protocol officers, and, and etc. etc. And there are women who will also come over there I see. from other places. Yes. So, second, you have Alaji Sisa also, yeah. also in charge of protocol. Yeah. And Alaji has clearly explained that by protocol, by procedure, this protocol officer should have been employed by the Public Service Commission yeah. and through his advice and help. Yeah. Because he's the chief protocol officer. He, he said he this didn't know. These things don't it. happen. The, mm. the, these people were employed by, uh, by executive directors. Direct. Meaning, Jambe had direct control over these girls who become protocol officers. Yes. And we've brought, again, the link between uh, the protocol officers and the pageant. pageant. Because the, girl, the lady who Binta Jada said clearly... From the Ministry of Education. Yes, that she knew of yeah. two people, Tida. Yeah. She knew of two people who later became uh, protocol officers. And That's two, one. Yeah. Who were pageant contestants. Pageant contestants. And two, um, see, this pageant contestant, contestant should be communicating to them. them. And them to, to, the, mini, yeah. to the state house. Yeah. That means the ministry should be the intermediate. Exactly. But at a point, this the, communication stuff has been broken yeah. and the state house protocol guys they are directly in touch with the girls exactly. this shows direct connection and access by jambe to these girls. these girls so this is the layers of things they've established and they, 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 we've got to tufa who well, is now a victim okay. so it's like at every layer of responsibility yeah. the trlc has shown us who does what and if you go inside the room yeah. where Jambe did the, the, small, the stuff, the yeah, real thing. Allegedly. Well, it's not allegedly. Well, okay, well, yes, allegation. <laughs> well, it's an allegation. Well, but it is so compelling. It's an, for, for someone like me, I am totally convinced. Convinced, absolutely. I am yeah, no. completely so many convinced. People are. Like, even, even because, because the guy Tuva named to be Kim Papa is a member of the Gambia, serving member of the Gambia National Army. Oh. That, 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 yeah, of course, right. I made you like Papa and made, yeah. Jimbe Boy, Jimbe Jamme. So Jimbe may be yeah. away, yeah. but Major Adusanyan can confirm that, of course, uh, this lady was here on this particular day. particular day. And if we get the driver, yeah, and I the driver know. should be able to tell us whether yeah. if Tufa had left on that day, what was her mood at that time? Yeah. And also, when Tufa left, when she got to Senegal, we should be able to have her mental. Assessment and even the psychosocial support he had in Canada, yeah. it, did that professional doctor could tell us yeah. what, in fact, was the state of mind of Tufa at the time they met? Is it something consistent with people who have gone through this kind of trouble so or rape? Or so, so I think it's the circumstantial evidence it's, it's, is is it's, it's, it's it's is quite compelling. Yeah, to, unless to, if you don't want to believe it, yeah, if you don't want to, that's a totally to, different thing. Very good. Now yeah. let's turn. We still with the TRRC. Um, we had the next session will be the witch hunting, um, in the literal sense of the word, that is, <laughs> because the people have been hunting as witches in the forges and some part of the combos. And you've been following, uh, so much, not much has been said about it from, from the TRRC. Well, what do you know? What form will that take? Well, I, another I, public I think, testimony. Or yeah, yeah I, I think um, it, it will be another, you know, painful you know, incredible exposure um, of, um, you know, the, the crime of this regime. And again, painful because here we will be looking at men and women of age. And so I'm sure it, it will be very difficult because uh, the experiences, can you imagine, 
a 50 year old woman, a 60, 70 year old woman or man um, narrating how he or she must have soiled himself or herself or, uh, you know, uh, either through vomiting or other means, mm -hmm. I mean, or seeking to hide, you know, and the humiliation that we would come to see. I think it will shame all of us at, at the end of the day because you know you know the value the position of elders in, in our lives in our yeah. society. What baffles people is what is the business of government or the president to even conceive an idea like going out of the citizens and suspecting them of being witches? That's what continues to bubble people. <laughs> yeah, as we have not had. He's not the around the border by any. Mean, as we have been there, maybe we just. I mean, yeah. I mean the, story, the story is about the, yeah, the, the, exist. the sexual exploitation and the jungle is horrific enough. But this one completely continues to bubble people. Mm -hmm. How a government or a president mm -hmm. should really conceive an idea of getting to people because. They must have but, eaten but, up when you, you know, when you look at that and the sexual violence and, of course, all of the other crimes, um, you know, unless if one has not had the opportunity to study, to understand the nature of dictatorship, exactly. to understand what it yeah. means to have power unchecked. But don't you think this is... You know, so nothing will surprise, surprise you. Yeah, besides it, that... Painful as it is. this is I mean, one dictatorship, you, compare... you know, with another dimension, which is... Uh, how do you call it? Um, superstition. Exactly my point. But not the first time in the world. Though. Yeah, yeah, of course. Emperor Bokasa, Idi Amin, mm -hmm. yeah, all known to have been highly su um, superstitious. Superstitious. Yeah. Yeah. And superstitious based on the fact that they are constantly feeling threatened by any form of power whatsoever, especially uh, the dark power. Uh, so dictators everywhere are paranoid that way. So it's, it's not something that you would not expect. So if he could. Uh, Bear a ram, um, it was singing as poor ram yeah. alive. He could he could go after people suspected yeah. they so, so, so so um, you know uh, when Kampuare was sent away yeah. by the Burkina Bay in yeah. 2014. Yeah. Um, I, I wrote an article. It just Facebook reminded me of it yesterday, yes, yes, yes. and I saw it. Um, and I think the title of the article was Understanding Dictatorship. Of course, 2014, when I was writing that, yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, my mind was on the Gambia. Absolutely. And <laughs> so anyone who read it, you realize, okay, this, yeah. is, this is about this what's happening in the Gambia. Gambia yes. but, but just to say, as I noted in that article, um, dictatorship, you know, you wouldn't understand it if you are reasonable. Yeah. You wouldn't understand it by logic. logic. Yes, um, it, it's a, a game of its own. Yeah. And it's based on uh, violence, on deception, you know, and it uses all means. And for the dictatorship, nothing is an end in itself. Everything, including the dictator's own mother and child, are vehicles, are means to that end. Mm -hmm. And the end is, um, I will stay here to take control of the resources, you know, of the of mind, the, you know, of, of, of that society. Mm -hmm. So this is what dictatorship is all about. And so in, in that project, um, that dictatorship would employ any means to generate fear, any means to deceive, I mean, any means to inflict harm, pain, uh, so that it remains in place. Because uh, if you um, study dictatorships, it says they survive on the obedience of the people. All right. And so the dictatorship survives because people obey. And that obedience, yeah. and I remember having this conversation with some folks years ago, you know, at Tango. Uh, we all obeyed the dictatorship. Mm -hmm. If they said today's July 22nd public holiday, we all stayed home. Okay. If they said today's set settle, we all stayed home. Mm -hmm. um, if Jama is going past, we, we leave the road. It, that's all obedience. Uh, some of us left the country. Yeah. Uh, it's still obey because it's you've left the space for him. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Even though you, you want to resist yeah. outside there, but you, his space, you've left it. Yeah. You know. So in many, many ways, mm. even those who are fighting, but then, but then we see, are all obeying. But when you, see, in, when you see a willingness in that man to kill, just to have his yeah. head, I mean, it is... Yeah, yeah, so that's what... Right that, 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 yeah, so, 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 no, no, I'm, 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 I'm not... I'm it's called preservation of life. Right, I'm, I'm not in any way yeah. uh, critiquing the, the fact that the people we obey. Like, yeah, so, like, I, I, I obeyed, yeah. and, uh, you know, 
And this opinion is not out of, uh, you know, well, my own I volition, mean, yeah, I mean, or to celebrate anything. But you obey because uh, you are misled. Mm. You obey because uh, of pain. That's genuine yeah. fear. You know, genuine fear. Mm. And, yeah, so, and of course, he's used this to consolidate his power. Oh, yeah. So every element of power base in yeah. the country, yeah. whether it's religion, whether it's tribe, whether it's superstition, yeah. you know, the dictator employs everything, everything to the point else. that in your eyes, he looks invincible. invincible. He looks, I mean, um, like, yeah, oh, and all, 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 all powerful, all present yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So and this is how dictators move, all right. And so when we study dictatorships, mm -hmm. you know, from way back in history, yeah. any part of the world, yeah. You, you see incredible uh, madness that yeah. you begin to wonder like uh, does this really make sense, make sense. Why, why are you doing this thing when it makes yeah. it uh, it to you that or suffers anything from yeah. you so uh, read Bokasa, read I mean, you know read Saddam Hussein or you know Hitler you will see some you know yes. really mad things that you know yeah so this witchcraft uh, is one of those things mm -hmm. and and I, I, I can tell you, the testimonies when they come, um, would pe be people would be incredulous uh, again. Okay. Like people will be, nah, this cannot be true. Exactly. Yeah, I'm sure some and, folks may and, have to deny it. And one, one completely different uh, scope it will take, you can tell us more, that the hearings will be relocated from the Dunes Hotel headquarters of the TRC. Yeah. So, no, so they will start at the Dunes okay. for some time. Yeah. And because the uh, because the uh, this particular thing is unlike any other, yeah. they were following people in particular locations. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, they went to villages and people who were running. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. There, there were testimonies like yeah, somebody, yeah, I had yeah. stories like yeah. people leaving home people to leaving sleep home. in the bush. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they come home. They only come home. Yeah. Only came home in yeah. the night. Yeah. So they will be going to SL. Uh, I've heard. And they will, be they will have to... public hearings in SL. Yeah. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. And they will have oh, public... That's, that's one place Jammeh suspected to, to have to be harboring witches. Oh, he, he did it in all those places. Ah, as well as in Kanila. Yeah, he in did it in... Yeah, he did it also in Jambu. In and Jambu. they will go to Jambu. He didn't do it in Baribu, he did? Oh, no. We would have, fight. <laughs> we would have had, a, had a war with him. You know, we don't... We so, don't... Jambu, Kanila, Sintet. Yeah. They will be... A synthet is on their mind, but they are saying, they, they, as for the location in Fonji, that may change, mm. depending on where they find appropriate. So, but it would be interesting. Where, 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 this where? will be the first uh, out of uh, Dunes Hotel here in Tiara, as will have. Mm. Yeah. Where there are suggestions that some people might not like to take part in the process because uh, they either believe, they still believe uh, it is just, it's only going to discredit Jammeh, who is their champion, politician, political idol, etc. Well, I Even mean, yes, yes, but I, I can assure you also, uh, as time goes on and uh, um, um, people's awareness coming back, yeah. uh, that uh, this, for Jam, even for Jammeh, even for Jammeh's own standards, this political combat, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. People are beginning to come to certain realization and also understanding that look this guy messed with us absolutely so how could we still stick there are people who will testify mm -hmm. i mean you've seen the uh ensam it's not ensam mendy it's uh, was a jungler one of the paramilitary officers mm -hmm. who was recruited yeah he actually said his father mm -hmm. yeah. was part okay. of those who were also yeah. arrested, arrested based uh, on this ridiculous witch hunting, witch hunting stuff them. Yeah. And this is because I think they said Jambe's aunt, he was very close to yes. her died. Yes. And his that, suspicion and was suspicion. that they had died because of the witches. witches. So and he said, Look, I will have to deal with this. I mean, went to Pony. You remember his speech when he went to Pony, he was telling them, the day he was saying, I'll tell Bender and man, say, near no. Yeah. He was going to, we people are here and they die. And, and I, we, we know why. That we know why we died. And nobody had shot yeah. them. They just died of natural he believed they were killed. Yeah, he believes in those. Jambe believes in... I mean, there are a lot of people who are superstitious, but Jambe's own level of superstition <laughs> is so, just... So, so, so an, an individual yeah. uh, so dull like Jambe, mm -hmm. um, unsophisticated in any way you can imagine, mm -hmm. and then 
in charge of power, state yeah. power. Yes, that's where the And then is. that state power um, is left largely unchecked uh, by the very institutions of that state itself to check that power, uh, but also by even citizens, uh, because of citizens' limited political awareness, to understand that sovereignty resides in us, yeah. and that the president and the state as a whole derive their legitimacy and authority from us, and therefore we have a duty to hold the state accountable. Okay. So that, I think one of the lessons out of this TRRC, uh, what we should see is ultimately uh, that state power is real power. Absolutely. And that power in the hands of men and women without conscience, yes. without, without morals, without, without values, without, without education, education yeah. Uh, yeah. the tendency of that power to be abuse. transformed into a weapon yeah. to abuse citizens yeah. is very high. Very high. This is why um, uh, here government say this, we will never have Jame here again. Mm -hmm. And we know Terra CD, much more there is never again. Never again. But, but, you let, but we, well, yeah, let us not be naive yes. uh, that another Jame cannot come back. Yeah. Yes, it can. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as uh, we the citizens, particularly, ah, first yeah. and foremost, yeah. refuse to be vigilant. Exactly. So the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Exactly. That we are not vigilant, yeah. uh, that we are not proactive um, uh, to check that power. Yeah. Love your president, love your party yeah. as much as you can. Yeah. But, but um, check, yeah, because at the end of the day, we are all human beings. Absolutely. I am prone to corruption yeah. like you, like Jame. Yeah. I am prone to abuse. Abuse, I can yeah. get yeah. angry. Yeah. I can get... And, uh, yeah, and I, so to assume I, that I can if, if money yeah, is president, uh, so he would not abuse because this is money. It's false. It's false. Yeah, I mean, you have to check that person. Yeah. Change. yeah, I mean, um, and so I, I have these issues, or some people have this issue with me on Facebook. Oh, Madi, you never see anything good about this government. And sometimes you want to laugh, sometimes you want to cry. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it appears, okay, these are individuals who are yet to understand yeah. uh, citizenship, exactly. who are yet to understand state power, yeah. government. Yeah. That, I'm not here to say, to sing what uh, this government is doing. Because they, they have a terms of reference they, in the constitution that they are there to protect my rights and fulfill my needs. Exactly. So they have to do that and I have paid for that. Exactly. So I don't need to tell them thank you. Thank you. Oh, you know, you are doing a wonderful job. No, yes. My job is to make sure or to watch they, them they stay on that course. they are doing that every day and they stay on without course. any clapping without, without any thank you. And they are not doing it yeah. with any condition. Uh -huh. Because I'm paying for it. I mean, we pay for. Uh, Mr. Barrow's house, same house is like a five star hotel. Everything. Yeah, his healthcare, his security. Yeah. We clothe him, we feed him, Give we care him. Yeah, hundred million. Yes, to do. Uh, all right. To do many he, he, doesn't, he doesn't even pay tax. Exactly. I mean, and what is a better human being or citizen know, than me? No. I mean, he presented himself yeah. to be elected president, yes. and we elect him yeah. to give him our power. 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 Yeah. Why should I not clap for him for doing a good job? But that is what he's supposed to. Do. Well, supposed to. Right. So, <laughs> but what my role is is to check him. <laughs> One little mistake, I, I should so shout so as if I mean the world is uh, yeah. falling down. Yeah. That, that is what That's a citizen should do. That's because if, if we fail to do that, yeah, well, that is how we had the junglers. Exactly. That's how we had all this violence on our well, women, yeah. on our fathers and mothers, on the plunder of our public resources. resources. And then they personalized the entire state, exactly. you know, as his personal it's property. Personal. Imagine Jame said, my university, my, my GRTS, my, GRTS, my, GRTS, my, camera, my camera, my vehicle, my, my country. My oh, country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jawara used to say my government, but then <laughs> the PPP people said in, what he means there is the government he hates. Yeah, you can say my government. Yeah, you can still say it. The reason I mean, you can take that, but yeah. it is a my. Yeah, you can say my government. Yeah. Of course, you're the head of that government. Exactly. It is your yes. government. Because well, you can, you can you know, my people. Yeah, because we, we, we have to make a distinction. You hear them yeah. say, we are the government. Yes. The people are the government. Yeah. The people are not the government. Mm -hmm. You know, the okay. government is there. That institution and those people we elect or appoint to work there, the they are the government, yes. right? And somebody heads that government. Yes. So I, I'm not the government, I'm a citizen. Yeah, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, we have to understand that. But, so if the person says, my government will do A, B, C, and D, understandable. Yeah. But where you really go, because we know when the president says that, you don't necessarily say, like, this is my personal property. But when Jame spoke about my television, my university, 
He wasn't speaking in terms of a president talking about no, my that, that He was speaking in terms of his a university in his pocket. pocket. Personally, or that he personally him. built, yeah. uh, which was not the you case. Know? So, so, so um, um, I think at the end of the day, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and even as we go through this day, yeah. uh, this is the lesson all of us should draw. Mm -hmm. So we should, uh, from the TRC, we should not be just overwhelmed and disgusted by what happened in the narrations we hear. Right. We should understand these narrations are coming against a background. And that background is we had power that was unchecked. We had citizens that largely, that were naive, you know, and naive, indifferent, yeah, indifferent and in many ways, yeah, allowed this to perpetuate. Yeah. So, and, and until we understand it from that point of view, yeah. We are not going to learn lessons from TRRC. And we also have to yeah. put partisan yeah. politics aside yeah. when we talk about interests of the country. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mari Jobari, of course, you can never resist or miss uh, his mm -hmm. uh, uh, very frank talking. Um, Mustafa, your last words, as they say in order for us. There's no last word here, but for this particular episode. Mm. I don't know whether I should say like too far that I'm not also apologizing. <laughs> Are you too far yourself? Hello. Everybody's too far. So uh, yeah. I think it's going to be uh, when TRRC resumes, um, the witch hunting is going to be very interesting. interesting yes. But for me, there is no segment like this past one. Past one. Really? Because the reason, yes, because the reason why everybody is even more uncomfortable, especially the so-called political class. Yeah that has some connection to Jame or whatever, yeah. is because this, this is the thing that they do, but they don't want everyone, anyone to talk about. Okay. These are the same people who would say any, who would, who would like, come imagine counter. some guy who roams around with a Quran and this is what he does. Yeah. So this exposes the contradiction of our society. Uh -huh. And it's not just about Jame, it's about everyone. everyone. So, and that contradiction is very uncomfortable for everybody. Good. Yeah. So that's why you think that session, the ninth session that was... That is why I most, think the ninth session is the most what? important one. And even if you are to talk about the issue of prosecuting Jambe, who do we, what do you think it's... Yeah, which, 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 which areas think, do you think there are compelling this cases is, this against is, this them? Is sexual abuses? Compelling than because yeah, it's, all of them are equally important. I know, but, the, yeah, yeah. but, but, think, but think sexual, think of, sexual rape violence is, is a big thing all around the world for human rights. All over the world. For human it's rights. It's huge. Human rights Why do they select uh, Jamba's testimony, Jamba to go and testify in Usman's case? It's, it's huge. It's, it's huge. You know? And perhaps... Hopefully, Jamba's testimony, no matter it, how it, cons it, inconsistent they think it is here, it is, it is. may play a very huge role in the is Someone who has been raped once yeah. and someone who has been raped 1,000 times, there is no difference, difference between it. Yeah, but there is a I mean, bit of a difference between killing and raping. Ah, uh, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> the gravity. <laughs> In think, my in my view, yeah. you think killing is. More I think abuse. raping is more. We, you know, you know. When you kill someone, you just get rid of them. You know, when you rape someone, you ruin them. Western societies and they live with it for the rest of their lives. In Western raping society, is way more Western dangerous. Western societies, you get more in trouble by raping than killing. Well, it's somebody raping is somebody much more get serious. Get all. I, I, I saw it with my eyes a case in London where somebody who's accused of rape would never get a parole until thirty years, when a murderer could get it in five years. Very serious. Very serious. No, very serious. Very serious. Very serious. Because, you know, I think rape, um, even in the ICC statute, mm -hmm. rape is a crime against humanity. Exactly. Yes. Um, because raping a woman, I mean, subjecting a woman to sexual violence, you go to injure her as a person, physically, but also her dignity, her very essence, the sexuality of a woman, or even a man, is integral to your dignity, to your humanity. And so to um, explore that woman on the basis of her sexuality um, is crime that also injures the very essence of humanity as a whole. You know, because Sometimes I mean, you wo wo women, I mean, they're the mothers. Mm -hmm. And in a metaphorical sense, not just uh, physically, but yeah. that the, the world is That's without, right. exactly. you know, without a, a I mean, a, a woman. That's so right. to 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 play with a woman 
um, we, we, you play with the humanity. whole humanity Absolutely. as a whole. So it's a crime for me that is just unlimited. Absolutely. That's, yeah. and it's, it's yeah. like, it is in many societies, yeah. in the West and other places, We're forgetting like that. that men who are raped are equally subjected to that dehumanization. Yeah. Well, so yeah. it goes bold. Yeah. Rape is just dehumanizing. It's, serious, it's yeah, just but, ignoring the fact that the other person is an equal human to me. Yeah. So I am going to subject you to my whims, to my desire, to yes. my needs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I hope never again, never again yeah. would we have that in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about it in this edition of The Brunch. My thanks to Nima Kamara, a lecturer at the University of the Gambia. Madi Jabate, uh, who is from the Civic Society Organization, a human rights activist, and a very, very vigilant commentator on Gambian matters. Uh, Mustafa Dabo, of course, from Kerfatu, to all of you. Uh, we said thank you very much for joining us here. We will end this episode with a look at our entrepreneur of the week, which this week comes from Miss B Designer Outlet, which is located at Kololi Highway. Until we come back next week, goodbye. Manmai Bintadiba, CEO, Miss B Designer Outlet, Pineka Gambia. I'm going to be a refet, refet, refet. I'm going to prom dresses, I'm going to office wear, I'm going to sexy dress, I'm going to beach wear, I'm going to sport wear, both male and female. I'm going to suit stomach proof, gory. I'm going Pure leather, dala, and belter. We have quality. I'm um, original perfumes like Hugo Boss, uh, D and G. I'm um, a lot of beautiful things. I'm um, office wear, tamid pool, gori, simis. Yeah, I'm um, <laughs> Like you can see, I like fashion. Dama, dama love fashion top um, because we ma yugi Gambia madam Germany. Must not have modeling, but for jewelries. So after that, mune motoro mune ka something that I really want to do. So as life goes on there in Germany, because dama don't say for no no so. My legale, legi legi ma am legi so be na yon ma am legi fashion shop. So fashion shop be na classic fashion shop. So na mali gis yiri, be pares mo gis yin nit musolo. Musolo hamne is elegant in the right place, or mo sexy in the right place, or.
casual in the right place. I feel very happy. So, magis na Gambia, suma dekala, suma country la. People are here. Okay. Sometimes you can order things from abroad. Why easy would so fake any amulo the possibility in Boca Fufunono or Amulo Visa card because most of the guys so could get order online for Amulo, you know. So many okay, Hara Dal Ma Ubi Fashion Sub Gambia. So Lulu Mota like they knew I'm Miss B outlet. I'm not in here because Ben and Banco am in the Mall of Gambia. But with we have almost the same things yeah i'm not sample you have the medicated sampling germany like they you get toothpaste toothbrush i'm not to meet multivitamin tablets i'm not diabetes sugar i have a lot of things so you say more to the outlet you know that is everything is inside yeah Challenge is Gambia is beautiful, but it's a small country. Business is very nice. So, man bagas you may in the, the may try ma genus ma bagas in Germany. Na ham ne original la, na may dem tomato turkey. I search for quality. So, lolo mo ta bagas it ang dessert. Because Munna fe am dala be na bo ham ne manko jai six thousand suit eight thousand lolo lukota because it's quality man tam lumo ko deje ne fufuno no mota maiko wara jai fi the ham na ne am na nini nga ham ne nyungi ne ka fi ni di na nyu nyu wahale these are challenges you know the sumagi se ni mudu kasi tamari e buga definitely you come for shopping you are happy I really want you to go out happy. So Lulu, that my day had a stress too, so I have to sometimes come down with the price. You know, those are challenges. You have to make sure I'm prepared. Business with a mate, money had a slow too, so I'm not going to be no mel. Um, small we man for I'm being a staff. We man for I'm neta, so I have four staffs. And kena kang ito na fa to Wali and Aisa to at Babuka, so mandumo fide na ka so I'm so happy that yung ma tapatwal tisi ka na. Plus we mga arrange mga set customer care they are very nice. The madi nyo mo talk mo buy and help so the madi gis nung day jai si customer. Kufigi na reg dang day happy with a big smile on your face. Um, fi actually all customers are equal for me because I have different class of customer. I'm na yon ham ne ligay karla office workers lang, maybe bankers. I'm na ladies yon ham ne, you know they are just housewife, ak girls, so. I have different kind of customer, different category, and they are all the same because as long as they dress well, we are happy. Uh, in five years' time, actually, is a is a dream that I have. Tamawuga am my own brand, like my own brand. That's why Lulu Mota Sahma today. Um, for some sort of miss be because Munako def si city sad, Munako def si bag, Munako def si um, Luneka, Rahal, jeans. That's my wish in the next five years. I'm um, different, different branches, I'm um, my own brand name. Fi Kufi Buganyo, Fi Muyeneka, I'm Kololi Highway, opposite Gaddafi Most. See a co-op petrol station, be so so. That way, for Frank, they get Miss B outlet. So, because for just um, to my staff, the any inquiries, munga dial two eight three four nine five five. 
o nga visit nyo si sun Instagram page bi Miss B Designer Outlet or we have a Facebook page where we can meet Miss B Designer Outlet so you can reach us anywhere I'm thanking everybody who is working with me is my staff si first of all ak sumo customer si nga hamne without them you know dun fine kate without them bunta bi di ubeko so without them tamin do mo na face my staff si so I'm saying a big thanks to my customers and a big thanks to my husband and also you must say tanta me you know how many they follow me on Facebook or Instagram I'm just saying thank you so much you can all come and then look for your outfit before you get you know sometimes we give out gift my games my acts my patamic at team be careful thank you so much We're not all about skin, we are skin, care, and the plus. And the plus does come in so many different ways.
Oh, you can buy any more. I'm not looking. Welcome, welcome. I basically let them know that I'm not school, man, that I can really relax. What about madam? Yeah, what about madam? What about the madam? That's right. Villa, Grand Villa, we love the Laguna, the Munantana, Gara. Oh, that's bad. Yes, 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 no, 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 Na labu ul bebe sehari, adun. Na bu ul bebe ni orang dering kau mungkin ibelah fira ibelah suai terayam. Until Grand Villa, na kelianu la lafino, wana mukamu tin telkang. Na ye sabat Grand Villa, ye la kodo na fa kalamata. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I I said, 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 guest house dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood easy investment sanyang seaview estate is the best choice you have been waiting for our sanyang seaview estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hop of busubi roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family you can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan option. With over 300 homes, you will enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security post, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325-9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property. Boy, Janna Seekers Restaurant. That's why I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be here. Janna Seekers Restaurant. I'm going to be here. 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 
Bade lomba conference lomba workshop lomba ye fo pe ni lo dunia kono domoro beta ma ni lo international o tewoda number one amange ba domoro jam dama e sa domoro jam e sa atari ya a wo mo kuba ndi sa ni kapo sa futa ndi e o to sa na kuwa be mo sikes restaurant nda kono jam na mo yak ni man te jorom bija aban sikes restaurant known for best quality food and customer satisfaction ni <laughs> Ada sidung atau suku roda minto, itu mesin yang sudah terpun aku no, eh pitu kau berjambi ada ada pitu kau babel, itu saya tahu ada ada yang tak pernah kau tahu, wadah mat, wadah mat, ni ada baru sahaja nak kau dah, nak tanya ni tu kan kerja nak berada sahaja, tanya ni lepas ayo kau kerja. Baluwa service dingkira la jampo woman ken na kole ako baluwa service sa alde mano kaje ko ale dumur fe ol sang ale dum baya moli ana la kanin tawul wato bela ani wad sudum fanon kono baluwa service la dingkira lu ani la do ku nyolu e do banko karo bedo kabirin carton fo koyna nan la fa ko ku ko tan sudum baluwa service la koldo ali commande telephone la no la melbu ko 940021376943192 wala 3192870 wala han kabi alta internet do ali la kulu jibe www.baluo.com do you live abroad and want to build your dream home in the gambia without risking your funds and family ties do you want a household name that is trustworthy and efficient a name that will continue to give you updates on the project from the beginning to the very end with videos and pictures if your answer is yes then worry no more boss construction and asset management is here for you if you live outside the gambia and want to build your dream home then this is ideal for you just reach out to boss construction and let's start building the dream home into a reality with boss construction the difference is clear we give you value for money some of our services includes the following construction management building equipment rentals rent management purchase and leasing asset management and many more for more information please contact 282-4945 better still send us an email bossgambia at gmail.com or you can also visit our website on www.bossgambia.com boss construction a name you can trust boss construction and asset management keeping families together